Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will solve example 7.5 by another method. Uh, we have already done it by the method given in the book, but now I'll try to do it in a simplified method, I hope, where you don't have to memorize all the formulas. So let's start. This, you recall, is the equivalent circuit of a induction motor per phase equivalent circuit. We also know that the power is given by torque into angular velocity. And from here, uh, we can calculate the induced torque or the rotor induced torque. The induced is actually PAG or the power divided by angular velocity. So, the omega syn uh, synchronous and for maximum, T maximum, we have to have PAG maximum. Omega sync remains same. And PAG for a single phase is the current in the circuit, I2 square R2 over S, this is the load in this case. And for three phase or the total power, it will be multiplied by three. And just a point to note from here that the air gap power PAG is directly proportional to R2 over S, this uh, load resistance. Okay, now we come to the question. This is the question given, 460 volt is the input signal and whenever uh, the voltage is written, it is actually line to line voltage. So the first thing we have to do in the equivalent circuit, we convert the line to line voltage into uh, phase voltage. So we divide by under root 3, so it will become 266 and it is 60 hertz, 4 poles, we have to keep in mind, Y connected, wound rotor induction motor, has the following parameters, so I have written all these parameters in this equivalent circuit, and we have to calculate these four terms, so we'll see them one by one. Okay, now the first is, what is the maximum torque of this motor, and at what speed and slip does it occur? So we know this is the formula for maximum torque. For that we have to calculate PAG. To calculate PAG we have to calculate current I2. So we'll take help of a uh, Thevenin circuit. This is the circuit. We have to convert it into Thevenin's form. I, I2 can be easily calculated with the help of Thevenin's. So as you know that we separate the load and we calculate V Theven in at this point. And V Theven can be calculated as the input divided by total impedance, total impedance and multiply by this impedance 26.3 J. So V Theven comes to be 255.2. Now, uh, every time I emphasize that if you know how to use your calculator in complex mode, you can do this directly. If you don't know, you watch my video on uh, using your calculator in complex mode. Straight away, you can solve this type of a problem. Okay, so V Thevenin we found. Now we need to find Z Thevenin. So, you know, for Z Thevenin, we short circuit the source. Now, these two are in parallel. So we'll solve that. So solving this, parallel this, the answer is 0 0.59 J1.06. So we can draw the, and as, as you know that the real part is equal to R Thevenin and the imaginary part is equal to X Thevenin. Okay. So this is our circuit now, the Thevenin circuit, we have put in the values V Thevenin and Z Thevenin and then these two. Now to find uh, maximum torque, we have to find 
uh, the maximum slip. And as you know, for maximum power transfer, the load impedance has to be equal to source impedance. Now we are just calling this as the load because this is the element that will consume uh, the maximum power resistive load and we are taking all this as part of the source. So uh, uh, if you take the magnitude of this, R theta n square and x plus x2, calling this x2 square, that will become equal to the load R2 over S, where S is the slip. So first of all, from here we'll calculate uh, the value of slip. So the slip from here can be written as this and now putting in the values, value of all the elements from here, we get uh, slip to be 0 0.198 for maximum torque. Okay, so we plug in 0 0.198 in this, in place of a S. And so our circuit will now become, if you solve this, this will be 1.67. Need to calculate T max. And for that, as we said, we have to calculate the uh, PAG. For that, we have to calculate current, I2. And I2 can be calculated from here, 255.2 divided by all this impedance. So it will 93.42 amperes. Okay, now PAG 3I square R2 over S, plugging in the value of the current that we calculated from here. And R2 over S is 1.67. So this is the air gap power, 43907 watt. So we have calculated air gap power. We now need to find the angular sink frequency. So to find T max, we also need omega sink, and omega sink can be found if you know the sink speed. So sink speed multiplied by 2 pi divided by 60 seconds, and sink speed can be found from here, 120, the frequency of the signal, and divided by number of poles. So we, the question is given that the frequency is 60 hertz and there are 4 poles. So the N-sync is 1800 revolutions per minute. Now we plug in N-sync here to get omega sync. So omega sync is 188.5 radians per second. So now we have found PAG and omega sync, therefore T max. T max will just plug in the values 232.9 Newton meter. Now in the book the answer is 229, hour is 232. But uh, note that in the book they have uh, carried out a lot of approximations. Uh, so I hope our answer is more accurate. Okay, so uh, we found the maximum torque and then we have to, at what speed is the maximum torque and what slip it is occurring. So n maximum, this is the formula, is 1 minus uh, the sink multiplied by n sink. Sink we have calculated, uh, 1.98 for maximum multiplied by 1800. So the speed for maximum uh, torque is 14444 revolutions per minute. Now the B part is to find the starting torque of the motor. Now for starting torque, the slip is 1, because if you look here, this is the uh, field, sink or stator field that is moving and the rotor is now constant. So there is 100% slip between the stator field and the rotor and that is why we say that slip is 100% or 1. So we put S is equal to 1 here and then we uh, solve for current and then we find power, um, air gap power and then we find the starting torque. So the current, same technique that we have solved, just change this resistance value here. PAG 
and from here T start is 108 newtons per meter, newton meter. So this is the second part and in book it is 104, doesn't matter, ours is I think more correct. Third part, when the rotor resistance is double, now this resistance was 0 0.332, it is now doubled to 644. What is the speed at maximum torque occurs? So for, uh, we don't only have to find the speed where maximum torque occurs and then we have to find the starting torque. So for starting torque, S will be 1. Now for maximum uh, torque, we have seen that uh, this is the formula, the load and the um, source must match. So now from here one more thing, uh, you can see that the slip is directly proportional to the R2. Now since R2 has been doubled in this case, so slip will be just double. So 0.198 we multiply by 2. So this is the new slip for uh, resistance doubled. And so the speed we can calculate from here straight away just putting in the value of S new value 398. So this is the speed where maximum torque will occur now. And to find the uh, starting torque, again we have to calculate the current by putting in this value. So this is the new current and PAG, just plug in the values. So this is the air gap for starting and T start in putting in the formula is 176 and the book it is about 170. Okay, so this is how you solve and finally and the final question was to calculate and plot the torque speed characteristics. For that you have to use MATLAB and the program is given in the book so give it a try. But after you run it through the MATLAB these are the two graphs that you can get. And just uh, a point of interest, uh, this we had calculated uh, the maximum torque. 232 uh, when R is original R so you can see this is about 232 this value and it occurred at 144 speed so the speed is about 1444 and the starting torque was 108 so starting torque from here is about 108 starting torque when speed is 0 and similarly when it was doubled then the starting torque became 176 so this is for the uh, double and you can see it is about 176 and the maximum speed is somewhere here so the maximum speed is 1087 revolutions per minute so i hope uh, this gives you an idea how you can solve this question directly without memorizing the formulas thank you uh -huh.